just a second. And our guy, Russ, what's <laughs> yeah. going on, Russ? We caught you in the act. He told that guy, yo, don't go behind. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Oh, yeah. Wow. Who is that? Hey, Russ, who is that behind you, man? That's a, f- a former Michigan quarterback, Devin Gardner, uh, oh, wow. wanting to make his presence known. Oh, okay. He's yeah, going I remember him. Steps. He's a child. Ass. He's a child. Is that what they teach y'all in Michigan? Let's see that Heisman pose, <laughs> big dog. Damn. Yo, put your Ohio State jersey on and just sack him. Right. Right. What's going on, guys? <laughs> How we doing? How we doing? All right. So um, let's start with one of the fresher rumors going out there right now, and we'll show the tweet, too, for you, Russ. And, you yeah. know, all the insiders are getting involved here with, with their take. They're all calling their, their white socks and their raised sources being like, what are we hearing here? So fair or foul on Lance Lynn and the fit with the Tampa Bay Rays, Lynn's strikeout rate has surged this year. And do we have – we want to show Ken or we got, we got a little Bob Nightingale. We got a few, uh, there we go. Bob Nightingale. He said the Rays are engaged in serious talks with the White Sox for veteran starter Lance Lynn. The two sides have already exchanged names. And it's funny, like you get the insider and here, I'll read this part first. The Rays are one of 10 teams on his no trade list, but he's informed the White Sox he'll waive it for a chance to be with the Rays. You know what I love too, is like the petty stuff from all the insiders. Once Bob puts that out there, like there's some insiders that are like, like I've been saying in my notes columns for, for weeks now, <laughs> this is going on at the moment. Like Bob's not doing anything new here. It's just like fun to see all of the uh, all the beef that's going on with your uh, colleagues. It's a it, the insider life is interesting, right? Because everybody <laughs> is trying to do the same thing. Everybody wants to be really good at it. It's competitive. Like you guys know, as athletes, like you want to compete, you want to be the best. At the same time, man. Like you can't, you can't get caught up in because I don't want to. I don't want to ever undercut somebody. I respect everybody that does this job. I know how hard it is to do it. So no, but it is funny amongst reporters, and you even see that you know on the beat level as well. Like, hey, I had this part, right? You know, I had this part of the trade, right? I had who was included in the package. So it's a. Uh, it's interesting over here. Also, Scott, dumbass reporter asking Machado the question. What's going on, man? <laughs> yeah, he's changed, man. Uh, he's I, changed, I, dude. I lost right, my gig. Like, he's, this guy's changed. That wasn't a shot at you, Russ. Ah, uh, nah. I got to defend the the the, the brotherhood Ooh. of reporters. Come on, wow. man. I, you know what? what I'm, the I'm the first guy. The I'm sisterhood. The, first... the personhood. There we yes. go, Crassy. <laughs> <laughs> Keep me on my toes, Crassy. I apologize. I was just having having fun. I used a playful word yeah. that mm-hmm. was no mm-hmm. offense to uh, your reporter club. Ism. Your reporterism. The community. Yeah, exactly. Please <laughs> still give me votes when it's Hall of Fame time. Yeah, <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's your power. No 4T frick of war for you, buddy. Hey, <laughs> Russ, I got... Definitely not going for it. I don't think they... I think there's like a curse meter for the... F- Ford C Shit. Frick, Ford C frickin' Frick Award. There you go. I got yelled at yesterday for asking Ken who the last person texted him on his phone. So that's where I'm at in life right he now. My in, insider stuff. He texted yeah. us after. He's like, Todd Father's trying to grab my sources right now. I was. It? Russ, let me talk to you about something. The White yeah. Sox and the Cubs are playing today. Is this the last start for the Strowman and Lynn episode here in, uh, in Chicago or what? So... I guess it remains to be seen if Lance Lynn actually makes his start tonight. I, I think from the Stroman side, the Cubs are five and one in the last seven days. And they're making it really hard for Jed Hoyer and Carter Hawkins, their front office tandem, to not be a buyer yeah, at the deadline as opposed to being a seller. If the Cubs stay playing the baseball that they're playing, right? It's gonna be I think it's gonna be really hard for them to convince themselves out of being a buyer right like you look at it are you gonna go make a big move no a big splashy move no but i think you're showing enough and david ross talked about it yesterday when i was at the ballpark like hey we want to we're tired of selling around here like we have a group of guys that want to go out there and win ball games but at the same time you know that you can you have to make it tough on that front office by winning games like and we talked about this last week with the padres everybody thinks the padres come into the season oh, man, World Series contender. But unless you're winning games, that doesn't really matter. Like, on paper, it doesn't get you to the World Series, right? It's what happens. What's in the win column? What's in the loss column? So do I think this is Stroman's last start in a Cubs uniform? I'm split. Because if, okay. if the Cubs play 500 ball, 
sure, I can understand them saying, well, if the guy might opt out anyway, let's go ahead and get something for him. But if you're in a position in a wonky division to go make a push, make a run with guys playing good ball right now, I think that's what you got to do. I think one of the things that keeps coming up is, oh, this team's going to make this decision based on how the rest of the season goes. But a lot of teams are making decisions like Otani's making decisions based on attendance. That's not an issue for the Cubs. The Cubs are in an enviable position. Fans are still going to come out, whether you think, you know, whatever his name was, Leva or whatever it was who had the, you know, went off on Cubs fans, whether they're good fans or not, they're still going to come out. So wouldn't this be the time to make what you said, the splashy move for the Cubs? Send Stroman out. That's their splashy move. That's the move that I think will help the org. I am I get what you're saying. And I think uh, it's something I've talked about a lot of last week, like reshuffling the deck in a lot of ways. Like, is there a way that you can buy and sell, right? Knowing that logically, if you have a guy in a Marcus Stroman that can opt out, has pitched really well this season and earned himself a, another big payday at the end of the year, as opposed to not getting anything for him and letting him walk at the end of the year, why not go out, you move him to a team that's probably better positioned for him to make a run in the postseason, you get something back, and then you continue your upward trajectory in the offseason and make your splashy move. Then, when you're only spending money, you're not giving up money and prospect capital. Because I think you guys look at the Chicago Cubs and say, all right, it's a team that's clearly moving in the right direction. But you're not putting them in the same conversation with the D-backs and the Braves and the Phillies and the Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants. Uh, like those teams. Like, I think those are the big boys. I don't know if the Cubs are in that big boy conversation. Yes. Okay. So I'm always pushing for teams to go for it if they've got a shot, a legit yeah. shot. I just don't see it with the Cubs. I've watched enough of them this year. Like, this team is not winning the World Series. In my mind, they're not making it to the postseason. And I could say the same thing about the Angels. And there's a second layer to this. Those teams, in my mind, would have to be significant buyers. If they decide we're not going to sell, we're just going to chill, you're not going anywhere. So it's just weird that the Cubs are going potentially game by game right now to decide where they're at. You're, you're many games below 500. You need to be realistic with yourself right now. And I'm the first, these guys can back me up. I'm the first person to say, Screw you. You should go for it to most of the teams. Like, stop it, right? And we'll get to some of those other teams a little bit later on. The Cubs, to me, are a classic case of, like, it's not there. You want it to be there. It's not there yet, you know? And I know you're a big market team. You haven't spent enough like a big market team lately besides on the community around you and buying up every piece of real estate in the freaking uh, Wrigley area. But as far as the team is concerned, this is one of the biggest seller's markets I've ever seen. So, Russ, for me, I'm like, you absolutely must trade Cody Bellinger. He's going to be the biggest position player available. And for me, the only reason Stroman wouldn't get traded is if teams are so scared off about the player option and that there could be an injury and then he stays on just like Rodon had last year. But otherwise, like this is a huge time for them to strike. For me, I'm like pissed when I'm seeing them go game by game. Like we're 100 games into the season. You still are going game by game to see if you're going to trade your guys or do nothing. I think most front offices know who they are and where they are. But can can you convince yourself by the way that like look, you look at the look at them in since the All-Star break they're playing really good baseball, right? And so you have to take that into account. But at the same time, you mentioned them selling. They have a fan base that is quite different than others, right? It's not Baltimore or Arizona. It's more like a New York, a Philly where it's just like you don't go for it for the third consecutive year. Your fans are going to let you hear about it. And I think Kratz is right when they said, look, they sell out. Like, you guys have played in those you know, 120 day games at Wrigley Field, packing the house in the middle of July, middle of August, September, April, doesn't matter. Like, fans are going to be there. And I think being in this city, knowing how Cubs fans have felt since the trades of Anthony Rizzo, Chris Bryant, and Javi Baez, they're tired of, you know, being in the little, what feeling like they're in the little kids' pool. And at some point, they want to be in the, at the big kids' table again. 
But what is the balance of front office? Hey, we built this thing up to be sustained, but also we're tired of not being a good team. Hey, now I'm a, that's a good good answer there. Even though I, I feel like you're you were going back and forth a little bit there. That's all right. Hey, <laughs> he's like, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> just, you're teetering a little bit. It's okay, man. You can make the you can make the case for both sides. Like I, I can't really say, oh, this side is dumb, this side isn't. Like you can look at it objectively and say, all right, this team should probably go for it. This team probably shouldn't. But if okay. the fans that are paying their hard earned money to come out to your ballpark and support your team. Like, we're tired of being in seller mode. I think front office take that into account a little bit. I'm not saying they take it out a ton. But let's say if of their 100%, 5 10% is like, all right, we're, I'm tired of putting our fan base through this. And then you have to, at the other side, what does our ownership group think, right? Because you have some ownership groups are like, do what you need to do. You have others that are like, you know, let's, let, let's go for it. Let's push our chips in. Well, let's let's take it to another team in the AL West. They're the Mariners, buyers or sellers right now. They're four and a half games out of the wild card. What you sh- what should you do there? We have Paul Seawald on. I was making him nervous that Depoto was watching every move he was making. So, what <laughs> what do you what do you think the Mariners should do? Man, it, the Mariners are such an enigma, right? You look at yeah. what they've been all year long. It's like this team should be so much better than they are. And last season breaking the 21-year stretch without reaching the postseason. And, and you have J-Rod become one of the stars in all of Major League Baseball. Ty France, who could absolutely swing it, bursts onto the scene. And then this year, you're expecting them to continue in that trajectory and really you know, be one of the big boys in the AOS. You're not expecting the Rangers to come out and do what they did in the first half. But J-Rod hasn't been J-Rod. There's been a lot of up and down, which what you expect from a young player. But there's been lately a lot more down than up. Ty France hasn't swung the bat like we've seen him in years past. Teoscar Hernandez, who was a big acquisition for them in the offseason, has had an up and down season as well. And so because none of those guys have really gotten things going offensively, it's put a lot of pressure on that rotation that has a lot of talented young arms. George Kirby and Logan Gilbert, you bring in Luis Castillo and you sign him to an extension, like really talented rotation but you guys have been in the room when you have an offense that isn't performing not putting up runs it puts a lot of pressure in those pitchers to be like all right i gotta put up zeros every day right like we have to go six seven innings and give up two runs or less because our offense just can't get it done right now so should they be a buyer or seller it's leaning towards seller to me but at the same time like the wild card makes it so interesting for a lot of teams right like like we were mentioning with the Cubs, like one good week and you can convince yourself in your mind that you're better than you probably are. Yep. All right. I'm going to need more of a definitive answer on this one. Who wins okay. the trade deadline between the Rangers and the Astros? They're playing each other right now. And I think far and above, I think the Rangers are out in front. Who wins the trade deadline in the sense of now we're going to pass. We're going to pass that other team. My gut says the Strohs. Gut says the Strohs. Because I think you look at the, the baseball that the Astros have been playing for a while there with no Jordan Alvarez, who is going to be a perennial MVP candidate for the next decade. And guys kind of trying to figure out where they are. You had Jose Abreu coming into a new city, trying to figure out his role with that team after years here in Chicago. They played good baseball as of late. They're 13 and 7 in their last 20 in, in the month of July in the last 20 games. The Rangers are 10 and 10 in the month of July. Haven't played at the level we saw them play at in the first half and at the end of the first half. And while the Rangers probably need a move more, especially with the way that they've been playing, they've kind of you know been stagnant, especially that starting pitching. Their bullpen hasn't been great as of late. I believe the Astros, because of the way they're playing baseball, a lot of those guys have figured it out. You have Alvarez back. Bregman's playing really good baseball. Chaz McCormick has been really good for them, and Kyle Tucker is swinging it right now. I actually think the Astros are going to make a more impactful move at the deadline. There you go. I like that. All right, keep keep that energy going right now because uh, <laughs> our friends at Cookie Pop are going to help us pop off right now. Let's run it. All right, nice and simple here for you, Russ. And you can go yeah. multiple teams if you want, but – who are you feeling most passionate about at this moment 
for ball clubs that need to make a statement, need to make a trade that tells your fan base, this year is our year. The Tampa Bay Rays. The Tampa Bay Rays. And, and I, they are 5-14 and 14 in the month of July. They had a significant lead in the AL West, and the O's chased them down. And now you have a situation where you've lost a lot of your. They had a ton of starting pitching depth when the season started. They lost Drew Rasmussen for what will likely be the season. You lost Jeffrey Springs for the season with Tommy John surgery. You know you're just getting Tyler Glass now back. Shane McClanahan is a fantastic starting pitcher, one of the best in the American League. But you never know if he's going to be banged up at some point. And so they need to go out and make an impactful move. You, you hear the reports about. Lance Lynn, that's something that helps them and something we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. Having a guy that's pitched in that division in impactful games is important. Even on a staff with as much talent as they have and Taj Bradley, Shane McClanahan, Tyler Glasnow, to have a veteran on that staff for an offense that for the better part of three months was one of the best in all of baseball. I think that's the team that needs to go out and say, hey, we haven't played great ball as of late, but we're still a really, really good baseball team. And we have an opportunity to do some special things in October. And this just in, Zach Eflin left today's game with left knee discomfort. It's not not a shoulder, mm. arm, whatever, but it's not great. And he didn't pitch well today for Tampa Bay. Four innings, seven hits, five runs, a walk, and three mm. strikeouts. So if if that's not adding on to your case, I don't know what is. They always, need help. There, there always seems to be something like what well, the guy needs they to get pitch a lot away. of pitching injuries. No, but I'm just saying, like when a team needs somebody, there's always something like happens beforehand. Like it's not just one thing. It's it, 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 there's there's always something going on. I don't know. That Fish. helps to give you a push. Doesn't yeah, it? no doubt, no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. All right, I like it, Russ. Good stuff, man. We'll talk to you soon, dude. Thank you, guys. Oh, real quick, Scott, before I go, yes. I Todd, I want to tell you, I'm I apologize. For playing the both sides of the fence, but I wanted to when, when I'm when I'm talking to fans out there, I'm trying to give the complete perspective. Like, okay, I understand what teams are thinking sometimes, but I also want to give them this perspective of like you guys as players, what fans are thinking. So it's not me trying to play the fence. I'm just trying to give full perspective. Listen, we're, we're getting we're getting used to Scott's new gig here. He's changed. You're changing. It's okay. It's the way the world's going. We're all changing right now. It's all good. What big dog. Word I use dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> dumbass reporters. Dumbass. That's what I am. That's, <laughs> Scott was actually talking about me. He was. I know he Ooh, was. That's cold. Inside, he was. No, I, that's that's no. been my dog for years, Scott. That's Russ, how. You, that's no. how we are. That's where we Never. are. Come on, Never. Scott. In fact, Russ, you're invited on what is it Tuesday, for sure. We're going to do like a longer hangout and we are going to just either praise or bash trades. We are going to like tell everyone what needs to be done for those hours leading up to the trade deadline. So like get ready. Not, none of us are going to be dumbasses. Only the GMs are dumbasses on Tuesday for either doing it wrong or doing it right. All right. Hopefully my feelings won't be hurt by that. <laughs> <laughs> Recover. Go See sack Gardner in the background. We'll talk to you soon, dude. All right, guys. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Hey.